Greetings my brothers and sisters, and welcome back to another video, or shall I say, welcome back to a series of videos on, judging. I've learned that people say, don't judge me, but they use that as an excuse, or defense. This is another way for the enemy to get you to ignore sin. So, this series with first video is called, What does the verse, do not judge, signify in the Bible? Before we start, please like, subscribe, and share thank you. And let's get started. The most often cited of Jesus' teachings may be his injunction. To refrain from passing judgment on others, even though it is nearly always cited out of context. In Matthew 7-1, Jesus says, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. Many individuals understand Jesus' meaning in this phrase, as you don't have the right to tell me I'm wrong and use it as a means of intimidating their detractors. When considered separately, Jesus' admonition to do not judge does appear to bar any unfavorable judgments. But the paragraph is much more than just those three words. The Bible's injunction against passing judgment on others does not exclude us from using discernment. Jesus states, do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs, right after saying, Do not judge Matthew 7 to 6. He warns, Watch out for false prophets. By their fruit, you will recognize them. A bit later in the same discourse verses 1516. Without the capacity to evaluate beliefs and actions, how are we to identify the dogs? pigs, and false prophets. Jesus is granting us the ability to distinguish good from wrong. Furthermore, the Bible's injunction against passing judgment on others does not imply that all deeds are morally equal or that truth is arbitrary. According to what the Bible says unequivocally, truth is everlasting, objective, and inextricably linked to God. A lie is anything that contradicts the truth, but labeling something as a lie entails making a judgment call. Similar to passing judgment, to declare adultery or murder to be sins is also to concur with God. Jesus did not imply that no one could recognize sin for what it is. According to God's concept of sin, when he declared that we should not pass judgment on others. Furthermore, the Bible's injunction against passing judgment on others does not negate the need for a correction system for sin. The entire book of Judges is included in the Bible. God himself elevated the judges of the Old Testament judges to 18. Judges and the contemporary legal system are essential components of society. Jesus was not stating, anything goes, when he said, do not judge. In other places, Jesus commands us to judge rightly, saying, Stop judging by mere appearances. John 7, 24 This hints at what constitutes a proper and incorrect kind of judgment. Using this scripture together with a few others, we may describe this in full judgment making snap decisions is incorrect. It is wrong to judge someone merely by their outward appearance. John 7, 24 Proverbs 18.13 states that concluding without first gathering information is stupid because he was blind to the fact that the lady had been pardoned. Simon the Pharisee condemned a woman solely based on her reputation and outward appearance. As a result, Jesus chastised Simon for his unfair assessment, Luke 7 to 3650. It is incorrect to make hypocritical decisions. Matthew 7 to 1 warns against hypocrisy Matthew 7:35 in comparisons to hypocrites. Matthew 6 to 2, 5, 16 before Jesus commands us not to judge others. We condemn ourselves when we call attention to the wrongdoing of others while continuing to engage in the same sin Romans 2 to 1. Severe, merciless criticism is incorrect. Titus 3 to 2 
says we should always be gentle toward everyone. As Jesus said, in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you, Matthew 7 to 2, and mercy will be offered to the merciful Matthew 5 to 7. Judging oneself righteously is incorrect. God opposes the haughty, and we are called to humility, James, for 2.6. In Jesus' parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, the Pharisee condemned the publican from a position of pride in his righteousness. But God saw the Pharisee's heart and would not pardon his transgression Luke 18 to 914. The false assessment is incorrect. Giving a false witness is expressly forbidden by the Bible Proverbs 19 to 5. Do not malign anyone. Titus 3 to 2. When Christians speak out against sin, they are frequently accused of being intolerable or of judging. However, fighting sin is not immoral. Raising the bar for righteousness inevitably characterizes the unjust and attracts the slings and arrows of those who choose sin over godliness. Herodias became enraged with John the Baptist for confronting her about her adultery with Herod Mark 6 to 1819. She eventually quieted John, yet the truth could not be silenced, Isaiah 40 to 8. While Jesus praises right judgment, believers are cautioned from passing judgment on others unfairly or unjustly, John 7 24, ESV. According to 1st, Thessalonians 5.21 and Colossians 1-9 We are to be discerners. Acts 20.27 20, and 2 Timothy 4 to 2 both command us to preach the full counsel of God which includes the Bible's teaching on sin. Our mandate is to confront our fellow believers who are in error Galatians 6-1. Church discipline is what we are supposed to do Matthew 18-1517. According to Ephesians 4-15, we ought to proclaim the truth in love. As we close this time of reflection on your word, we humbly come before you, recognizing your infinite wisdom and boundless love. Lord, we acknowledge the importance of today's message about judgment and the reminder that only you, in your perfect righteousness, hold the authority to judge. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for the times we have allowed judgment to cloud. Our hearts and minds, forgetting the compassion and mercy you have shown us. Help us, dear Father, to embrace the teachings of Christ, who reminded us to remove the plank from our own eyes before noticing the speck in our brother's eye. Grant us the strength to extend grace and understanding to one another, recognizing that we are all imperfect beings needing your mercy. May the words spoken today catalyze transformation within our hearts, prompting us to be agents of love and compassion in a world too often marked by judgment. As we go about our day, let your Holy Spirit guide us in our thoughts, words, and actions. May we be slow to judge and quick to love, emulating the example set by your Son, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray, Amen.